I give it one year tops. Alright, what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new to the channel, which given the number of followers that I have, please hit that subscribe button, like the videos, and share them with your friends, family, ex-girlfriends, your moms, dads, tias, abuelas, if they know what YouTube is. Now, I know it's been a while since I've done a, a video at all, and damn it, I hate that I live near... Uh, God damn it, plane, shut up. Now, it's been a while since I've done videos, and what can I say, just life sometimes gets a little hectic. Uh, things happen, and you can't do the thing that, that you like anymore. And that's what happened to me. I stopped doing videos. I did the one reaction to the Logan Paul video, just as a, you know, shit to shits. But yes, according to my YouTube, it's been like 11 months since I made a video and that's a little sad for me because I genuinely did like making videos but like I said life gets in the way and you just don't do it anymore but that's about to change because I am back for now <laughs> here to offer content to the three loyal people that I have watching my videos my brother-in-law my tia Lupe that random dude from Dubuque Iowa dude seriously you gotta stop sending me those messages. But to whoever's watching, thank you for your patience and I promise to make more content more frequently. Hopefully. Now, the majority of my videos are pretty much opening Pokemon booster packs, booster boxes, what have you. But I've also made content on this channel about soccer. By far my guilty pleasure. But I just don't make enough content for it. So, what I thought is why not make more content for soccer? Now, I'm not going to break down games, give you analysis, statistics, and, and all that stuff. That's just not what I do. But why not something a little bit different? So a few weeks ago, I went to a concert to Chicago. And while I was there, the Chicago Fire were taking on FC Cincinnati. And I gotta be honest with you, FC Cincinnati and the Chicago Fire. That's not a very sexy match. And I was genuinely debating in my head whether I should put money into watching this game but the tickets were pretty cheap for a front row seat at Soldier Stadium so I caved and bought two tickets front row to watch the Chicago Fire against FC Cincinnati and I gotta tell you it wasn't a bad game it was actually pretty cool but like I said I'm not here to break down any uh, analysis what I want to do is give you my experience on what it's like to go to a home game to the Chicago Fire's Soldier Stadium. Now, unfortunately, the Chicago Fire doesn't have a march to the match, but just the experience to get there, to see the fans going into the stadium, the food, the entertainment, it was actually pretty cool to see that a team that was not doing all that well at Bridgeview in their former stadium is actually doing pretty well in the heart of Chicago. Now, the Chicago Fire are not gonna sell out Soldier Stadium, okay? That's just something that's not gonna happen. Unless Javier Hernandez or Carlos Vela come to town. But even then, it was a pretty cool atmosphere. And I gotta say, there are a lot of Polish fans. I saw a lot of people in the Poland national team jerseys. I saw a lot of Poland flags. And that probably has something to do with Gaga Slovina, the 17 year old goalkeeper for the Chicago Fire. And you know what else I saw? A lot, a lot of FC Cincinnati fans there. Now, given that Cincinnati is only just less of 300 miles from Chicago, it doesn't surprise me. So being that it's only a four and a half hour drive, I can see people making the long, long, long journey to Soldier Field. But enough of that. So pretty much the same day I landed in Chicago was the same day that the game happened. So I got very little sleep. So thank you Spirit Airlines for your lack of good food, reclining chairs, screaming children. Now that's not your fault, but it happened on your watch. So the hotel wasn't that far away from the stadium. So I was able to see a lot of fans walking to the game with a lot of Chicago Fire gear. A lot of fans repping the Schreinsteiger and of course, Jiren Shikiri. That's pretty much who they came out to see. 
not the Chicago Fire, but it was a really nice day outside. Pretty sunny, uh, the temperature was just right. Oh, and Grand Park was beautiful. Everything was so lively, the people were nice. But my favorite part was by far going underneath the underground pass and seeing the campus museum. That was pretty dope. And a lot of people went on their bikes, which it's pretty cool. Saw a pretty cool dinosaur. It was huge. And as you curve the corner, there it is. Soldier Field. Yeah. All right, going inside. Super nervous. Not really. No, it's Chicago versus Cincinnati. Why am I nervous? It's gonna be so boring. And right there, once we got past security, a pretty cool large Chicago fire crest. Took a picture, that was nice. Now, I was hungry, so I went to the nearest snack bar that there was, and of course, a Polish-themed snack bar. Okay, we got food. I'm happy. We're happy. You know how long of a walk that was? To me, it's not people to hurt the death sentence. Now, so as soon as I got my food, I went directly to my seat, and just taking it all in, Again, my first time at Solar Field. It was a pretty cool experience. Any other team, we would not have this. But as soon as I finished my food, I wanted to go explore a little bit more. So I asked the nearest employee where I could find some fan gear, pointed me into the right direction. And along the way, there was a Polish band. Not sure what their name is, but it was pretty cool to see. That dude in the accordion was getting it. Now, one of the things that I really want to do when I go to these home game stadiums is buy a scarf and buy a jersey. And that's exactly what I did. Bought myself an authentic jersey, a home jersey, and a scarf. Now, I was pretty hesitant to put it on, but what kind of experience would it be without the gear on? So I found the nearest spot to change and I was ready for the game. Now, I wanted to see the fire train, but unfortunately I was on the wrong side of it. So all I could do was watch them from afar and watch the rival team practice right in front of me with a security guard who looks like he's having a really bad day. But eventually the teams went back into the locker room, got dressed, came out, festivities happened of course. Anthem played. Not sure why it's necessary to do a country's anthem in a league match, but you know, whatever. And then finally, kickoff. Going into the game, I didn't really have much expectations because, again, it's FC Cincinnati, the team that came in last place, not just last place, dead last place since their arrival to MLS. And the Chicago Fire, a team that up until last season played at Bridgeview. Oh my god, that fucking plane. And a team that hardly, if ever, made the playoffs. So, again, I went into this game thinking that it was going to be a snooze fest, but I still wanted to experience Chicago Fire. But to be honest, like I said earlier, it was a pretty cool game. The game was pretty intense, and the crowd seemed to be really getting into it. But what I did not expect was to be surrounded by a lot of FC Cincinnati fans. Well, that's not good. Get it on cell phone. Wrong team. Wrong team, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, I heard more FC Cincinnati fans cheer for their goal than when the Chicago Fire score. <laughs> but in typical Chicago Fire fashion, of course, they scored a known goal. One that Gaga Slonina didn't help either. So it's 2-1 and it didn't take that long. Gaga fucked up. Yeah, that's what happened when you trust a 17-year-old kid. Oh, Gaga Slonina. 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 John Duran scored in the 83rd minute, leveling things out. And again, in typical fire fashion, 
they let that slip. Only this time, thanks to a horrible mistake from, yes, you guessed it, 17 year old Gaga Slonini, a 17 year old kid who will be prone to making mistakes. They didn't communicate with his backline, pretty much gave it to Luchi Acosta, and of course he scored, ending the game and a pretty embarrassing night for the young goalkeeper. Oh. In last in last place for three whole seasons. That's who they lost to. At home. Of course, I was a tourist to Chicago, so I took a few more selfies in the Chicago nightlife, packed it in for bed, ending a pretty cool day at Chicago Soldier Field Stadium. Now, if for some reason you're asking yourself, you paid money to go to a Chicago Fire game? Actually, no, I didn't. Me and my lady actually got tickets to go to a concert in Chicago. Backstage passes to see Simple Plan. Got a pretty cool VIP experience with the band. Took some pictures, waited for about an hour or so until the actual concert started, and then walked back into the venue and had a pretty cool concert experience. Opening up with, with a band set it off. They were colorful, pretty cool. Followed by a pretty insane performance by Sum 41. And to close the show, of course, Simple Plan, who were pretty awesome. A band who up until now, I just realized were the original artists behind the hit song, What's New Scooby Doo? <laughs> Next day, I did a few more activities. Went to an aquarium, saw the bean for the first time. It was pretty nice. I did a little bit more sightseeing throughout the city. And of course, to cap the night, went up to a skyscraper, did tilt, and witnessed a pretty awesome sunset. Now please, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and do all that crazy stuff to make sure you know that I just made a video. <laughs>